hi guys welcome back to my channel for those of you who are new here please go ahead and hit that subscribe button and for our returning viewers it's good to have you back no this is the second video in my immigration journey series in the last video i know i had said that nvc was the headache but that's not true nvc was breeze you know because i got through with my i-130 approval in august and by september i was documentarily qualified so it wasn't nvc per se that was a problem it was the embassy I was not taking or that what that was not given NVC slot to, to you know set interviews but that's for another video today we're looking at NVC so NVC as many of us would know is a national visa center I see NVC as that middleman you know it's for pre-processing so after the I-130 is approved USCIS will move your case off to the NVC and by the way that's for those of, of you who are doing um, consular processing because you know you have two ways you can apply for a green card it can be adjustment of status and that would be for persons who are already in the US so and doing the filing here they would file still find the I-130 but um, they would not they, their case would stay with USCIS and they have another form that they would have to file with their I-130 but for us who did it overseas we did what is called a consular processing so our case is sent to NVC so NVC would be like a middleman that is preparing you for the interview so they're going to collect all the relevant fees they're going to collect all the documents making sure that you have all your documents before the interview so whatever form whatever documents you submit to NVC you will have to have the originals to take to the interview all right so um the first thing when your I-130 is approved uh, you get a welcome letter from NVC that's what NVC has created your case they have received your file they created your case you will get a, a, a welcome letter that will have some instructions and it will have a login to a portal that you will do everything to do with nvc through so um you will submit documents there you will make payments there paid for nvc to process all of that and see that okay your documents are fine and you're ready for interview now we're just waiting on the embassy to say hey we are we have spot for 50 people and how nvc works is almost like a first come first serve situation except for those rare cases where people will expedite and you know they will skip skip the um certain places in the line and whatnot but um it's like a first come first serve basis so the onus is on you to get the documents and get everything that NVC wants in a timely manner so that it can they can process your case and get you documentarily qualified at NVC at the NVC stage that is what you're waiting to become documentarily qualified when you get that letter to say that you're documentarily qualified it means you're ready for interview and we just are waiting for Kingston to say hey nvc you can send over these people so um if if you started filing before me let's say for example in 2019 and i started filing in 2020 you get to the nvc stage before me and nvc is asking you for documents and you're taking forever to send the documents like you don't do it quickly right and i get to the nvc stage before after you and as NVC asked me for the documents, they may send them, may send them, may send them. I'm going to get documentarily qualified before you. And in so doing, I might get my interview before you, even though you start filed before me. So it's like a first come, first serve kind of thing, depending on your category, of course, and depending on if your current, your party date is current and stuff. But for the IR one, you know, and the CR ones, the priority date is always current right so the moment you get documentarily qualified you're in line waiting for the embassy 
so the first thing you do with NVC, NVC will send you uh, an invoice. So within the portal, you get the first thing you'll do, you'll pay fees. So you'll pay for the affidavit of support, which is $120, and you will pay for the immigrant visa application fee, which is $325. Right? Um, what the affidavit of support is, it, it's a document that an individual signed to accept financial responsibility for the applicant who is coming into the United States. Affidavit of support. A lot of persons don't know this. It is legally enforceable. It's a sponsor's financial responsibility. And the sponsor's financial responsibility usually lasts until the person becomes a US citizen or or can be credited with 40 qualifying quarters of work, which is like up to 10 years. So it's a serious thing, guys. <laughs> so the affidavit of support, you know, um sometimes the person has to get what is called a joint sponsor so in, in those situations where a person might not their salary their income in the situation where the person's income might not be sufficient they will have to get somebody to supplement that and that is called a joint sponsor right so when you pay those two fees then you will wait for you might wait a little while for NBC to process the fees say you know fees went through and whatnot and um then you move on to the next step it took us like two days we, we heard back from nvc in two days after paying the fees so uh you can go on with the affidavit of support and with the application the ds260 form so the ds260 form is really that application for the immigrant visa so it's the is the applicant the person who's being filed for will fill out this form and you need to print that confirmation page you will need to take it to the embassy it does have a barcode on there and you will need that to take to the embassy so please be mindful of that then um with the affidavit of support now um the petitioner will have to submit some financial documents and what the petitioner submits depends on a lot of things but there is this calculator on the nbc site that will ask you some questions you'll be asked some questions and based on your answers it will tell you what you need to submit in our case we needed to submit the irs tax transcript for that year that we were filing which is 2020 2019 2020 transcript right so after all of that is done the tax transcript the ds260 waiver processing and then you have documents supporting documents that you will need to submit and even though they're doing it in steps um these things can be happening simultaneously because while my husband was submitting the tax i was doing my ds260 right after that you will how to submit civil documents what civil documents did i submit i submitted my birth certificate i submitted my marriage certificate the biometric page of my passport um police records so for the police record police record now is valid for two years I think they are trying to be lenient with us because they know it's the backlog. A lot of persons waiting for more than a year. So most persons will need new police records by now. So um, they have lengthened the time to two years to accommodate us, which was really good because even though in my case I had to get two police records because I was living overseas. I was living in Russia for a little and I was wondering how the hell was I going to get the Russian police record, but I went through their embassy and I got it. I liaised with them and got it to them. Took me some time. Took that and that took some time. As well, well, Jamaican police record. No, you think the Russian police record would be the difficult one, you know, because it's all the way in Russia and. 
I thought I was gonna have to wait, but the Jamaican one took me longer because I was in the center at the time and I didn't want to go to Kingston. I heard about this other place out, this police station or whatever. This place out um, in St. Mary that I could go to. And I went there one morning to get the police record done. Brought my passport, everything, fill out the form. Um, they took a copy of my, my passport. Expedite, you know, the pay for expedite it. And then um, when we go pick up, pick it back up, you know, they, days however much day i don't remember how much days for the expedite when i went to pick it up my name spell wrong and then the man i go tell me say oh whatever holiday i go come up and them now go work the office now go work so me have to go wait seven days or whatever so me i said i can't get my money then because me pay for expedite it. So no, him say if me leave with it, me can me can bring it back. So I made a few calls and um I got to go to Kingston the next day and get it corrected. Got it corrected. So that was that. If you were living overseas for more than six months and you came back to your country like in my case i was living in russia i came back to jamaica um i did not go back to russia after the police record was issued even if a two years passed i would not have needed a new police record basically that's what's written there right but criminal record if you had to go to court or you um you committed a crime you're in prison you need a, you need copies of your court record or your prison record and if you're a, if you're petitioning for a child that was adopted you need the adoption certificate as well so those were basically the documents and i mean if you you know what you need you can start putting these things together you can start putting these things together once your i-130 is approved all right you can start you know you need to get the police records you can start doing all that remember it lasts for two years so you don't have to worry that it's going to run out if you have to wait long chances are you won't be waiting for two years given that they're moving now so you can go ahead and start looking about your documents now what i did to keep organized because remember you can need to bring all of the original you won't need to bring all of the original all right this one looks so organized right now but it did organize i promise um so what i did i got a folder that is partitioned all right so you see i could actually say okay this is the invitation in ds260 because you know they're gonna ask for this for these things first so the confirmation page that i, that I spoke about the ds260 i had them here along with the invitation letter that you need to carry because they will tell you what you need to carry. get yourself a folder to keep organized it's a, and this was just for embassy so while you're doing the NBC stage you could be preparing for the embassy stage so whatever you're uploading in NBC just ensure that um you're keeping the originals and you have them organized so when the embassy stage come you have everything all right so as me said nbc never take long nbc stage was not long at all um i think one month and i'm saying we're documentarily qualified now i can say after being documentarily qualified then the headache came because the embassy due to this presidential proclamation 9945 on the suspension of entry of immigrants who will financially burden the u.s health system and that was signed by president trump and that is the reason we had that huge backlog that the embassy is actually trying to work through now so nobody was getting 
uh, appointments only person I guess if you had real emergencies certain people did I get um, appointments so a lot of persons had to be waiting I think NBC had over half a million case sitting there waiting to go out to the different embassies not just Jamaica that was affected the whole world right so they're just trying to work through that now so brothers and sisters just go and hold the faith and I'll soon get an interview later soon mm -hmm. my prayer for me so say my next video I'll talk about after getting the interview letter how to go about registering your interview how to set your medical appointment what you needed to take to the medical and what vaccinations you could possibly take before you um even go to the medical all of that i'll cover all of that i'll cover in my next video thanks so much for watching see you in the next one